Hello fellow space engineers, Gopescope here from the Gopescope Gaming Channel, and I'm happy to welcome you to another episode in our Timer Block Creations slash tutorial uh, series. I have a another sort of functional block to talk about today, which is gyroscopes. We're going to cover some of the things that you can do with them, some of the basic functions, so how they rotate, that kind of thing. Uh, and then I have one um, application towards the end of the video that we'll look at uh, as well. So if we head off in this direction, you'll see we have a, a whole series of gyroscopes on top of blocks with reactors. Uh, I'm just using this setup to illustrate um, how, they, how they rotate exactly. So if we come up here and access this one, this is sort of just the example, uh, one we won't move. You have, you have a number of options of things you can do uh, with these gyroscopes. Uh, you can toggle the block on and off. If it's off, um, it, won't, uh, it won't do any kind of stabilizing like a gyroscope normally does. And if you're um, trying to fly a ship with the gyroscope attached, you won't be able to turn it uh, unless you have other gyroscopes that are on. Uh, so that's the normal way that they work is if you, you hop into a cockpit, you have gyroscopes attached, you can, you can sort of pivot in different directions. You use your thrusters to move laterally, uh, forward, backward, up, and down. The gyroscopes allow you to sort of change your direction. Um, and those directions down here, yaw, pitch, and roll, those are, those are things that you can do through the cockpit uh, if this is on. And another way of, of operating these is, I'm going to turn it off just so it doesn't actually run when I'm doing this. You can select this button, which is override controls. And what override controls allows you to do is it allows you, if checked, to tell the gyroscope to um, move or cause rotation in a certain direction or a few directions, depending on what you do here, uh, at a certain number of rotations per minute. That's what RPM, RPM is here. Um, and then it also allows you to change the amount of power, so the amount of force a gyroscope will apply. Um, so right now it's at 100% force. If you want to have a weaker gyroscope, there's different reasons you might not want to have a gyroscope at full force, um, you can toggle that back. And as you can see over here, your uh, power requirement changes as you change the, uh, the amount of power that the gyroscope can apply. So if it's all the way down to 0%, it's 0 watts, and then you get 1 watt, all the way up to 30 watts. And of course, this is the large grid gyroscope, the small grid gyroscope uh, for small ships uh, and vehicles is going to have uh, different power requirements, but otherwise, the functionality all remains the same. Now, if you were to want to actually run this, um, what you do is, uh, just for the sake of not having things spin out of control while you're setting it up, you probably want the gyroscope off, because as soon as you click on, if you had any values in these, it would start to uh, rotate and move if you have overrides checked. So have it in the off position to set it up. And then let's say we want to change the yaw um, sum. We can drag it over here, and this is an expressed, as I said, in rotations per minute. You can also control hold control and left click like you can on other things. Um, as you can see, this is a negative value in RPMs and in, in here it's positive. So if we make this negative, now this is positive. Um, and it's also not uh, exactly accurate. Uh, I guess it might be rounding, um, but if we do 0.1, you might expect that to be one rotations per minute. It's actually 0.95. Uh, so if you want it to be exactly one, and you could just play with this to see what you want. There's, there's one rotation per minute. Uh, at, at 0.105. Uh, it's actually, I should say, negative one rotations per minute. Now the negative positive, um, I can show you that uh, over, over in our other examples in just a moment, what the difference is there, but basically it's just if it's rotating one direction and positive, if you make it negative, it'll rotate the opposite direction, just, just like you'd probably think. So now if that's what we want to do and we're ready to go, we would just turn this on and it would, it would fire up. So uh, what we've got, if I exit out of this, over to our right is a series of gyroscopes that are uh, pre-programmed, uh, and these sensors are just, uh, just set up to detect me, and when they detect me, they turn the gyroscopes on. So I've already set the override controls on, on all three of these that we see here. We'll talk about the fourth one in a moment. And uh, just from left to right, we have the uh, yaw example gyroscope, the pitch example gyroscope, and the roll example gyroscope. Each one of these is just set to one rotations per minute. Um, and the way that the gyroscope is oriented is important uh, as far as how it turns. So if you had this placed in a different direction, which is kind of what this fourth example is for, your yaw, pitch, or roll is going to work differently. So th that may not make sense now, but when we get to the fourth, uh, the fourth example, it will. So for now, uh, let's activate the yaw gyroscope. 
Just get close enough to turn it on. All right, and now one rotation per minute. You can see there's yaw. And now we can activate the pitch gyroscope. Again, one rotation per minute. And there's pitch. And then finally we have the roll gyroscope at one rotation per minute. So from left to right we have yaw, pitch, and roll. So when you're going to program these, uh, as long as you know the way that they're, uh, the gyroscopes are oriented, so these are all oriented the same way. Uh, by that I mean the way that they're positioned on top of these blocks is the same, just like the one ahead of me. Um, and so what you're seeing is uh, yaw sort of is sort of like a turntable kind of function, um, and the uh, the pitch function is is what you're seeing here, sort of end over end roll. Uh, and then the roll function is, is sort of like a barrel roll kind of a deal. I mentioned talking about the different orientations. So here we have two gyroscopes. They are both set with one rotations per minute yaw. So they should do that kind of turntable motion like the one you're seeing on the far left that's moving. Uh, but because there are two of them and they're not in the same orientation, they're going to actually cause rotation in two different directions. So you can see it's acting, it's acting as though we have pitch and yaw turned on to one rotation per minute. Um, so if you have a ship with many different gyroscopes, and when you've been plunking them into the ship, they're oriented in all kinds of different ways, and you want to go and do something uh, with, the, with the override controls, it's going to be important to know just how they're oriented. Otherwise, it's going to be totally random when you set them. They might be fighting each other. Um, you know, if they're, if they're set up opposing each other, um, and you turn all of their values to the same thing. Uh, if they're exactly symmetrical, there might be no movement. They might totally cancel each other out. Um, or it might be very diminished movement compared to what you're hoping for because some, are some of the force is being canceled out and some isn't. This gives you an idea of what we're talking about with yaw, pitch, and roll. I know at least for me, this was, you know, those are terms that I'd heard before, uh, but, but ones that when I hear them, don't necessarily know exactly what people are talking about. I'm not, I don't have like an aviation background. Um, those are those are things that you hear uh, referred to with planes. Um, so just with a little experimenting, you can see just how they're moving, and that'll kind of help us when we're actually going to go ahead and program something. Now, what I'd like to use these gyroscopes, uh, along with some timers and things, uh, to do is to create sort of a automatic maneuvering system. Um, let's let's get a uh, a void wolf out. Um, and uh, we'll just go ahead and use this as sort of the, the test platform uh, for, for developing this. Uh, I'm not going to make it look pretty. Uh, just for the purposes of seeing what's going on, I'm actually going to be attaching the new functional blocks to the outside. Uh, normally, this would be something to be built in and integrated so you don't see it. Uh, but what I'm planning on doing is, uh, is creating a, a system that, by the push of one button, will allow you to flip around and shoot at someone who's pursuing you. Uh, if you're familiar with the Hunt for Red October, and, uh, and later on, I think they mentioned it in Firefly, which I'm sure like a, a nod and a wink probably to the Hunt for Red October, there's a maneuver uh, they refer to as the Crazy Ivan. Uh, and that's what I'm going to try to create here. Uh, and what I'm going to do, this is something that you can do manually, but uh, it'd be kind of cool to be able to do it with the push of one button. If you're moving in this direction and you have someone chasing you, you want to turn around, you can turn off your dampeners, spin yourself backwards, uh, and you could actually leave your dampeners off and continue to drift in the same direction while firing in reverse, and then you can turn back around and, uh, and continue on from there. Um, so what I'd like to do is set up some gyroscopes and timers uh, to allow me to just push one button and then automatically uh, have me flip, flip around and perform a crazy Ivan maneuver. Um, that, that was a uh, submarine maneuver in Hunt for Red October. Uh, but in Firefly, it was a space maneuver. So it's going to be a space maneuver in this one also. Actually, the Crazy Ivan in Firefly, I think they ignited part of the atmosphere when they when they went to light speed or whatever uh, whatever they call it. I don't think I actually say warp or light speed in that show. It's not one that they get into it too much. So let's start out by just adding a couple gyroscopes. Get into, get into the weeds, how we're actually going to do this, and stop talking about sci-fi shows. Um, we're going to place two of them. You see they're uh, oriented in the same direction. I may need more, I may need less, I'm not sure, but we can start with two. Uh, if you're trying to do uh, something with gyroscopes, getting a ship to turn, 
Uh, depending on the mass of the ship and how fast you want it to happen, that will determine how many gyroscopes you need. Uh, but the way I'm going to kind of do this for now is, is just sort of trial and error. Um, we'll get some timers out. I think I'm going to need two timer blocks. We'll just go ahead and put those here also. And I'm going to get a uh, little control panel too so that I can easily access this to program it. So now we sort of have our hardware uh, set up. I may need to add gyroscopes later, but that's very easy to do. So for now, let's go ahead and program our hardware. Uh, we're going to access this panel, go to our timers. I'm going to name timer one the Crazy Ivan timer block and timer block two the Crazy Ivan stop timer block. And for this one, I think we'll want to try to do a delay of one second. Uh, this one, I'm going to drop it down to one, but we're going to be triggering this one now because you want it to happen immediately when you want to do the maneuver. Um, so for programming this crazy Ivan block, we actually should probably program the gyroscopes first. Now these are the existing maneuvering gyroscopes. These are the two new ones that I just added. So we'll call these the crazy Ivan gyros. And these will be gyroscopes that we will turn off and engage override controls. And from the little experiments we did just before and seeing the orientation of these now, we know that we want uh, the pitch function because we want this to sort of nose up and flip over. Uh, so what we're going to want is just like we did on the other ones over there, we want a positive pitch. Um, so if we go into here, find pitch, and we want to go up this way and we want this to happen really fast we sort of have a lazy uh, slow turning in those uh, but we want this maneuver to be as quick as possible and then we can get all the way up to 60 rotations per minute um, so in theory at 60 rotations per minute um, we'd have one rotation every second uh, so on our timers if we have a delay of one second that causes the gyroscopes that are causing the turning to stop after one second it should have made one uh, rotation. That's that's not going to be the case uh, because um, even though this says 60 rotations per minute, uh, it doesn't actually do that. Uh, like I said, that, that'll have to do with the number of gyroscopes compared to the amount of mass that they're trying to turn. Um, but let's just crank it up for now and see what happens. Uh, that may be way too much rot rotation, uh, but as far as I've been able to tell, as far as I've been, the way I've been doing it anyway, it's been sort of a trial and error thing. So we'll set it at that. We'll go in here to program the Crazy Ivan timer. Uh, the first thing we want to do is grab the fighter cockpit, put it in here, and we're going to go to the inertial dampeners setting and click on off. So the inertial dampeners, uh, you probably know, what that does is as you're thrusting forward, if you let up on the gas, so to speak, uh, the inertial dampeners automatically bring your ship to a stop. And when we're doing this maneuver, we're going to be flipping around backwards uh, so our, if we're, you know, pushing the W key and going forward and then you flip around backwards, um, if you continue hitting W, you're then going to be, uh, decelerating, I guess, because your, your back thrusters will be faced the opposite direction. They'll be doing kind of a retro burn. And if you let up off of the gas completely, your, your inertial dampeners will all turn on. You'll stop even faster. So for this maneuver, what we're going to want to do is have the inertial dampeners turn off. And then we want to go to our, uh, crazy Ivan gyroscopes, put them down here. And we want these to be in the on-off position. And then we need to go back down here to the stop timer, and we're going to go ahead and start this. So that has a delay. Uh, and then what we need to do is back out of here, go to this one. And all this needs to do is take our crazy Ivan gyroscopes and do the on-off function for these as well. And now with those set up, the way that they're set up, uh, when we hit the button, It'll turn our gyroscopes on. It should flip us end over end, hopefully until we're perfectly backwards. Uh, that will take some tweaking. And then it starts this gyroscope, which just a second later, we'll go ahead and turn the gyros off. So what you're left with is, if we have the gyroscope setting correct, um, is the ship sort of drifting with the same velocity it had forward, but in a reverse position so you can fire at a target behind you. So now if we hop inside here and get our crazy Ivan timer block, and set trigger now. So now if this works correctly, we should see it do this and stop about here, but hopefully faster than that. And then I'll be able to shoot at somebody behind me. Uh, and then if, if we uh, hit it again, the way, we've, the way that we have set this up, it should be able to bring me back to the forward position 
and uh, and ready to, to continue flying forward. And we shouldn't really lose much, if any, forward momentum doing that. So let's let's do a test. We're gonna uh, get up to speed here. You can see on the the bottom right, we're uh, approaching uh, 70, no, 80. Let's get let's get up there. Go to max speed now. We're gonna hit the timer block. Uh, and it's flipped us around. Okay, so it didn't get us all the way forward, but you can see we're still drifting at 100 meters per second. We haven't lost much uh, of our velocity at all. Now, if we hit it again, it should turn us again. And now the dampeners are on. Uh, so if we had this set up right, what you could do when you hit it again is engage your rear thrusters again. You know, hit W, and you would continue forward without losing any thrust. So I think after seeing that, all that we need to do is pop out of here and probably add a gyroscope or two. Let's start with one. And now this is where it's relatively easy to uh, tweak this with the number of gyroscopes. Let's find gyroscopes. Now all we need to do is click on this one, save. So now that's all connected to the same group. And go ahead and uh, adjust this. We want to turn this off, that on. So now those are the same. And now we can turn all of these to the same pitch. And now we've just added one more gyroscope to hopefully accomplish the same maneuver. So now let's get up to speed again. And we'll try the same thing. So the only thing that's changed is one additional gyroscope. And uh, we don't have to actually be at top speed. It doesn't matter too much. Uh, but now we are near top speed, at top speed. We'll hit, hit our maneuver button. And boom, we're just about facing backwards. Now I, I held the reverse thrust longer than I should have. That's why we decelerated. But you can see you're pretty much turned around. Um, now we could tweak this further. And flip this back around here. And that's put us basically back right where we want to be. And off. We can fire at somebody. And back on. And we can cook it out of there. So that's the general idea. Um, I won't uh, belabor this by getting it to be exactly perfect, but I, I hope you can see from this example that what we could do to get it just slightly more, I think we need just slightly more rotation. Uh, we could add another gyroscope um, to the back here. I think that'd be too much. I think one more gyroscope at full power would be more than we'd need. We'd overshoot it. But what we could do is add the one extra in. And where these all are at 100%, this one we could tweak its power, uh, bring it down to, you know, maybe it's a 50% gyroscope for this one. Uh, and, and by using that with grouped with this, so we'd, we'd group these up again, set this to override controls, and then we would have to tell them all to be the same rotation again. Now this one is exactly the same as the others, and to get it to be, to tweak it, to fine tune it so that it's exactly a 180, um, 180 degree flip, we would uh, we'd just kind of play with this power setting until we get it exactly right. Um, and now that cargo factors into weight, that will change things a little bit too. So what you probably want to do is test something like this with the vehicle um, loaded with like a combat load. So the ammo and the fuel that you'd have in there, because that will change um, the rotation somewhat. It shouldn't have a, a huge effect, uh, but it could have a substantial effect. It depends really on um, the amount of cargo. You know, if you have a lot of cargo capacity on a ship that you're trying to do this, it's going to really affect it. And then you might need to actually have a way of changing the settings. Uh, it might be so dramatic, uh, the swing in mass that uh, it won't work correctly, whether it's you know, depending on whether it's full or empty. This this kind of a ship, though, fairly limited cargo space. It's really just a little bit for ammo and fuel. It's not that much weight, so it's it's not going to affect it a great deal. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more.